Is the world ready for blockchain? Or should I say, is blockchain ready for the world? All right, sometimes you might be using the blockchain and run into some real head scratchers and think like, why does anyone even want to use this, right? So, you know, you might even have some doubts and say, do I even want to become a blockchain developer? Is this even worth learning? So that's exactly what I'm gonna be talking about in this video. All right, if you're new around here, I'm Gregory from DAP University. On this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain developer. So click the like button down below, click subscribe, especially if you've been watching this channel for a while. I know a lot of you have been watching and aren't subscribed. I can see that in my YouTube channel. Analytics. So hit that subscribe button. All right. And also, if you're serious about becoming a blockchain developer, you should join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. So is the world ready for blockchain, right? If you've been watching this space for a while, you might have seen, you know, interest kind of go up and down over time, especially with cryptocurrency prices. And right now, it looks like some of the interest is a little bit on the decline, right? If you look at like Ethereum price charts, you know, you see a pretty big bear trend here. If you look at Bitcoin price charts, you know, it's been kind of up and down, but right now we're on a downward slope. And I'm not talking about cryptocurrency price speculation in this video. That's not why I'm, I'm bringing these up. This is just to talk about general interest in blockchain because it does somewhat mirror cryptocurrency prices. Okay. Even if you look at like Google trends, you know, you see a big spike in blockchain interest during the big ICO bubble boom, Bitcoin price surge at the end of 2017. That was when blockchain, sorry, blockchain interest was at its all time high. And it's been on a gradual bear trend ever since. All right. So despite the cryptocurrency um, price speculation and the bear trends, we've still seen a growth in actual blockchain development over time. So why aren't more people using blockchain? Like, why do we see this interest declining? Well, there's a few reasons that I hear come up a lot. Like, the first one is user experience, right? We talk about, uh, you know, if anyone wants to use a dApp or something like that, they have to install a special wallet extension in their Chrome browser to go use a website, and that causes people to just, like, instantly say, what? Why do I have to do that, right? If you think about a dApp like CryptoKitties, it had, like, a 99% bounce rate whenever people went to visit their website. So that's, like, one. Another is transaction speed, scalability. You hear about all these problems with the blockchain right now and people focus on these as the main reasons that blockchain's not taking off. Now, I will argue that those are holding some people back, right? But I don't think they're actually the main reason that blockchain mass adoption hasn't happened yet, right? The real big reason I think that blockchain mass adoption hasn't happened yet is honestly because of clear use cases. All right, I'm going to explain that about why that's, you know, holding a lot of people back from actually using the blockchain, but it's not necessarily a deal breaker for you as a blockchain developer. So don't just like freak out and like end this video now and never learn blockchain. I'm going to explain all this. So here's why use cases are actually a bigger deal than user experience, right? So the, people will deal with bad user experience if the use case provides them with enough value, all right? We've seen that with cryptocurrency. Like whenever the ICO boom happened and people saw all this crazy price speculation happen in the marketplace, they were willing to deal with the headaches of having to install wallets, you know, manage funds, deal with really slow transaction times and all that stuff. Like the blockchain was really sketchy to use at that point, but people still did it anyway because they knew they could make a lot of money really fast where they couldn't do it somewhere else, right? So user experience actually isn't a big a deal as a use case. That was a really clear use case for blockchain technology right then. Put money in, make a lot more money back, and yeah, it was party time. And that was one of the biggest use cases for blockchain technology, and it still is. So one of the biggest use cases right now for blockchain is price speculation. And that's one of the big reasons we see this interest in blockchain going down and why Google Trends somewhat mirrors these cryptocurrency prices like, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum. If I were to zoom out on these charts, I'll just do it right now. They look a lot like, you know, what happened on Google Trends. Like I'll go back, you know, an entire five-year window. You see, uh, you know, this big spike. <laughs> And then this big decline looks a whole lot like this chart on uh, Google Trends here, okay? So these look very similar, which I think is a big, strong supporting argument that price speculation is one of the biggest um, use cases for blockchain, and it mirrors that sentiment with Google Trends. All right, and the other big use case is store of value, and people are still doing that, all right? So you might think, like, why on earth would I want to learn a technology that only has a few clear use cases and bad user experience right now? Like, why on earth would I want to do that, all right? Well, a few reasons, all right? The first reason is incentives, 
All right, I want you to understand this very clearly. There is such a huge upside, a huge prize for businesses who could come into the space and actually solve these kinds of problems, present a clear use case for people to come in and use this, and also a really good user experience. All these businesses are trying to solve this problem because there's such a huge pot of gold at the end of that rainbow waiting for them, right? So many businesses are trying to do this that it actually creates an entire economy Okay, a business to business economy that trickles down to blockchain developers so that they become very in demand. All right. And that demand is actually bigger than the supply of people who know how to build blockchain technology. So when the supply is big and the demand is low, that means that there's a lot of opportunity for blockchain developers to become you know, highly paid and earn a lot of money. Okay. So that's a huge reason to be in blockchain, despite the fact that you don't see you know, all these clear use cases right now. You don't see people just flocking in to use blockchain so that mass adoption can you know, happen. So bottom line is upside so big that it actually creates a demand for blockchain developers in the long run. All right. And it's a really weird concept, but that's how it works. All right, blockchain is kind of like Pandora's box. Now that we've let this thing out of the box, there's no shoving it back in, right? And honestly, you know, I don't sit here and have a crystal ball and say, uh, by this date, we're going to have this mass adoption of blockchain. We're going to have this use case, this use case, this use case. I don't claim to do that because I think it's just honest to have that kind of clear speculative vision. But do I think the future of blockchain technology is positive? Yes, I do think it's positive, right? In 50 years, do you think we're going to have a digital currency that people rely very heavily on to transfer value and store it? I think it's the best model for an actual currency. It's the best use of technology. I think we're going to, all right? That's just my opinions, not financial advice as always. But I think the future of blockchain is positive. But I do think the industry is going to change over time. Um, you know, as the tech gets better, more use cases are going to become clearer. And that means all the bad tech's going to die off. A lot of people are going to consolidate around the really clear use cases and the real clear value propositions and everyone who's doing stuff well. So if you want to become a blockchain developer, you have to be kind of ready for that ride, right? You have to be willing to be quick on your feet and jump around. You have to be a trailblazer. You have to have that spirit. But I also will say, like, you're not going to be immune from that in any other field of software development. Trust me, I've been around this industry a while, just software development in general. And I've seen a lot of stuff happen. You know, your company could tank, they could get bought, uh, you could get laid off. Uh, the technology that you learn, even if it's not blockchain, could die off and your skills could like not be as in demand as they once were. I've been through this type of stuff. I've seen it happen to other people. So you're not immune from that if you just went and learned something else. Um, but I also want to talk about one major point and that's understanding how like technological innovation plays out and understanding like what it looks like to be in on the early days of a new technology, okay? So sometimes in the early days, like people are doing stuff with blockchain that just doesn't make any sense, right? I talked about earlier how we're kind of sitting around scratching our heads saying like, is anybody using this? Why are people using this? Like, why am I even building this kind of stuff? So sometimes you'll even see people building things that like don't even make any sense, like, People, people see these like kind of goofy blockchain games that like nobody's actually going to play. I'm not saying all blockchain games are bad, but some of them clearly like, like why would anybody use it? Uh, you see scams out there. You see like a collectible item that nobody is ever going to buy or like a cryptocurrency that's clearly not valuable, but people are building it anyway. You even see hype built up around it and stuff like that. So uh, that's not unique to blockchain, Okay. This kind of stuff has happened in other fields of technology. Like think about like VR when it first came out. Like you see a lot of goofy stuff happening. Also early days of the internet. You, know, you had all these companies come out in the pre-internet bubble that were like talking about how they were the future and all this kind of stuff and this really, you know, salesy marketing hype. Uh, it was kind of scammy, a lot like some of the early scam ICOs that came out with blockchain. And a lot of those companies, you know, went bankrupt, went out of business. I'm sure a lot of people went to jail and things like that. Um, and, you know, I digress. But like w w in the early days of the internet, um, you know, I was talking to one of my mentors the other day and he was talking about like buying a, a, an M&M's package uh, from a vending machine a long time ago, like in the really early days of the internet. And it had a website address on it, right? And he's in here thinking like, why does anybody like want to go to a web address on the back of an M&M's packet, right? But fast forward to today and you see like Coca-Cola and these big brands who have social media accounts and there's a clear business use case for them doing that kind of thing. Even though now some people are scratching their heads saying like, why does Coca-Cola need a Facebook or something like that, right? So you're going to see stuff happen in blockchain right now, people building stuff that seems pointless with blockchain, but you might be surprised that 
a clear use case that evolves out of that later on down the road as more people actually use the technology, okay? So that's an important thing that I want to highlight, all right? So, I mean, also, just remember more goofy stuff that happened back when the internet first came out, like a GeoCities website. Let me see if I can actually pull one up right here, GeoCities. <laughs> so I can't find any GeoCities websites off the bat, but, you know, you remember these, like, these looked really goofy, and people could put, like, uh, you know, hit counters on them and things like that. Like, who uses a hit counter anymore on their website? But there's all kinds of stuff that we had back in the early days of the internet that didn't make sense. Also, a lot of things people doubted about the future of the internet when it first came out. So think about like um, putting your credit card in a website, like, like digital payments. Uh, it, a lot of time people said nobody's going to put a credit card into a website. Like why would anyone trust that? But fast forward to today, and you got people who have their credit cards saved in so many e-commerce platforms. Amazon, for example. Uh, even people will put their credit cards in little sketchy Shopify sites that are run by like some 17-year-old kid who's got a drop shipping business from China, right? So people just do it without even thinking these days. So bottom line is you have to understand how technological innovation happens. You have to know what it looks like to be in the early days of a technology. Um, yeah, you're going to be sitting around scratching your head saying, why are people doing this? Like, why am I even in blockchain? Who's going to use this? Am I like, why am I a blockchain developer? But don't worry about those doubts so much. So think about all the people who are trying to solve those problems, shouldering that risk, creating an economy for you to where you can actually work in it and just follow where this thing heads. Like it's exciting, right? You need to be a trailblazer, ride that wave of blockchain. It's Pandora's box. We're not stuffing this thing back in the box. Blockchain is here to stay. All right. So, uh, all this is going to be a lot more visible in hindsight, and I'm excited to see where this goes. Uh, I plan on continuing to do this YouTube channel. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. Uh, stick around with me as we watch this blockchain thing, you know, and see where it goes. So is the world learning for blockchain? I don't know. In some ways, it is. In some ways, not quite yet. All right. So I hope you all like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the like button down below. And if you're serious about becoming a blockchain developer, you really should join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.